Hi, this is Chetz, the server guy, and uh, last time I published a video how to convert a Linux machine from VMware to Overt. I forgot to mention this one small thing about networking. Let's look at this machine, this CentOS Mini that I converted. Now, I already played with this machine, but basically if you run an M2E or use an MCLI, for example, you'll see here that uh, the conversion created this wired uh, connection and you'll see the old one that you had in VMware. Now, if you're using a DHCP on that uh, virtual machine, that you, uh, then you just need to uh, delete the old one. It would be called, for example, ENS192. Delete it, uh, make sure your network is uh, restarted and that you can access it from outside. If you're using a fixed IP, then you should go to the old machine. Uh, I mean, go to the old interface, sorry, and look at the IP, uh, subnet, gateway, etc. And uh, just type them again here inside this wired configuration. Since I'm using DHCP, it doesn't really matter. After you've copied it, delete the ENS192 and restart the wired configuration and try to ping it from outside to see that you can access this machine and everything works okay. That's regarding conversion of Linux machine. Uh, one more thing. Some old Linux distribution do not have QMU guest agent and basically you won't be able to monitor and I mean, and I mean monitor regarding um, all the IP address, memory, CPU, network, etc. Because that's the details that the QMU guest agent passes to over it. So if you use, for example, tiny core or stuff like that, you cannot install the QMU because there is no package unless you want to compile and install. Next, let's convert a Windows virtual machine from VMware to over it. Before we'll start to convert a machine from a VMware, a Windows machine to overt, you need to take care of two things. One, if the machine name has spaces or any symbols that are not dash, I mean minus, <coughs> sorry, you'll need to make sure that name doesn't have any special characters or else it won't let you convert it. The other thing, any Windows machine, or Linux machine for that matter, needs to be using a BIOS. So your virtual machine needs to be BIOS based and not UEFI or EFI, because at the moment Overt 4.3 doesn't support converting a machine with UEFI. They added initial support for UFI for creating a new VMs, but it still doesn't appear in the menus and you have to go through the command line to do that. So let's do the conversion. I'll click here, import VMware, VMware load. And I'll take the Windows 10 Pro machine and I'll move it to here, click next. And I'll attach the Virtio drivers. It needs it in order to work. And I'll leave it to pin provision. And uh, you'll need to select your storage where to host this virtual machine. I'll take it, for example, to the iSCSI here. Uh, everything else stays the same. You click OK. I already converted the machine, so I'm not going to click OK. After you've finished to convert, and this will take time, you, which you can basically look at the node at 
var log VDSM import and you'll find the import log. And this log is important to file bug reports if something goes wrong. You'll need this log report to upload it to your desktop and submit it to Bugzilla, to libguestfs, which is a separate project, but over it uses it to convert the machine. So here you can see, for example, that's the machine that I converted. And it finished and removed the temporary files, and we're done. Now let's take this machine and power it on. We'll wait for the green. OK. So we'll click on console, downloaded console. And it's booting. Now, since we clicked on the Virtio Win ISO while converting, before we started the actual conversion, it should have installed all the drivers that needed the network, display, etc., etc. And we should see it in a minute. Let it boot. Yeah, okay. And I'll type my super secret password. Okay. I guess that it didn't do the entire job. In order to fix this issue, it's very simple. We'll take this machine and we'll do a change CD. And there is an Overt tool set up. I'll find the link and I'll post it for this clip and I'll click OK. I'll go back to this machine and as you can see it found a CD. OK, so I'll open it and I'll run this file. Sorry. OK. And what it will do it is basically install all the missing drivers and uh, it will save you a lot of work or else you have to hunt for the INF and there are tons of it because it supports almost all the popular operating systems. So it should take a minute to finish. While it performs this installation we can go back to this machine and change the time zone to your time zone that you've been set to overt. So here I'm from Israel. I'll change it to Israel. And this will require reboot. I can live with that. Meanwhile, yes, install Red Hat drivers. This will install the agent that will uh, report back to a virt CPU, memory, disk usage, IP address of this machine, FQDN, etc. And as you can see here, we have network. It finished. We can reboot. Okay, while it reboots, we'll see it right here. As you can see, it's rebooting. While it reboots, it's closed the console. Okay. Okay. We have network. Let's log in. Okay. 
I'm logged in, network is working. Let's open command prompt. And let's ping Google, for example. And it works. So if you're using Windows Pro and you want to connect it to Active Directory, etc., now is the time to do that. That's it for now. Hope you like it. Feel free to subscribe for to see more videos. And I'll see you next time. Thanks.